so we go live. Okay. Not live live. I think we're... Yeah, whatever. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to ETS2, a little bit of portable gaming. We are in... Where we left off, we're in Wick, and we're trying to get north to Iceland. And the first... First job is going to Iceland. There's a couple of problems, and we're going to have to sort this out. This is 29 tons, and we are in a 4x2 that doesn't have the biggest motor. It would be tricky to pull 29 tons at all. I don't know if we want to pull 29 tons in Iceland. We're not going over the, over the high side. Hmm... So we have a few choices. We can either go to a repair shop and put a second axle on this truck. We can take a different job going somewhere else. And there's really not a whole lot up here. We can take this. Hmm. We can get a different truck or we can take a different load. You know what? It's a video game. Nobody cares. It's just a game. We'll take the big one. Now, when I say we'll take the big one, I don't mean we'll take the big one. We don't need fuel. We don't need sleep. We do need a repair. So we'll have to do that on the way out of town. Where is my trailer? I'm, I am, I've decided if this is a complete catastrophe and we can't even get, get the trailer out of the pickup point, then I'm just going to pause the recording and restart the game, basically, um, redo things a little bit different, betterly. Okay, now, now, now we can see where our trailer is. <clears throat> Still can't though. probably could have done this differently. I'm really not quite awake yet. Not really feeling it yet, I have to say. But these are all good experiences. Good experiments. These are all good experiments to... Wow. I, I guess I could have done this differently if I tried, but I don't know how. Okay. All right. It's a do-over. We're going to pretend that didn't happen. I'm doing these a lot of different ways. I'm doing these tests a lot of different ways. Not, not only video settings and audio settings, but I'm doing them at different times of day. I'm doing them when I'm in a different mood, almost. All right. Different energy. My energy is a little different. It's not quite the same. Oh, see, uh, I don't even know if I can turn around here. Maybe, yeah, maybe. So I'm doing these at different times of day to sort of experiment with how I am. Different times of day. Also, how loud, how quiet it is in my place, and just various things. You know, it's a 
I think I may have said this yesterday. I think I may have said this yesterday. This game is... Kind of not, I wouldn't say hard. It's not a hard game. It's a... It's an intense kind of game, I think. For me. And it's weird to realize that because I always thought it was relaxing. And it, it still is. Maybe those two things aren't necessarily mutually exclusive. Maybe something can be intense and relaxing. But I always found the game to be very relaxing. And now, as I'm really... I mean, I always wanted to, I always wanted to do it as well as possible. I want to do everything as well as possible. But I find myself now when I'm recording, I find myself really focusing on everything because I, I want the content to be compelling. And as I've been sort of studying YouTube for the past few months, and trying to notice the difference between the content that works for me and the content that doesn't, I think the best way to summarize it is the content that works for me, it seems like there's attention to detail. And the content that doesn't work for me tends to seem a little more casual almost like someone just flipped on the flipped on the OBS software while they were gaming and, and just captured what they were doing anyway but it's got a kind of a casual feel to it not casual in a good way not casual hey I'm just gaming but sort of sloppy and I think the been the very best content for me, <clears throat> my opinion, not, I'm not saying the very best content on the internet, I mean, the, the sort of content that I like the most is content that obviously has a lot of time and effort and work put into it, but that time and effort and work almost makes it look casual, and there's a I like that reversal, that, I like that reversal that talented people can do, which is to make something that's very difficult look very easy, even when we know it's very difficult, even as we're watching it. So that's, I guess, a, a place that I could aspire to, is to make good content and make compelling content, but at the same time not have it look like something that is rehearsed and uh, a little too structured maybe. That's a good way to say it. And you know, something that I'm realizing about gaming is, or about doing video capture of gaming is in a way it's almost like sports in that you have a general idea of what's going to happen but you don't know exactly how things are going to turn out and there's well, I was reading somewhere I was reading somewhere about style and yeah, Alfred, Alfred Hitchcock it's early see that's another thing that I need to learn I'm not quite awake yet and my mouth is not quite awake yet so I'm tripping over my words a little bit note to self Alfred Hitchcock said style is just plagiarizing yourself and this piece that I was reading it said that 
when when we go to a movie or when we watch something on TV or even sports, we want to be surprised, but only within a framework. We don't we don't want to be that surprised. If we go to see a movie, we know it's going to be between 90 minutes and two hours long, for the most part. There are shorter and longer movies, but mainstream Hollywood type movies, we know between an hour and a half and two hours. So you could surprise people by making a movie seven hours long, but that's not necessarily the kind of surprise people want. And also if you made a movie an hour long, that's, that's not what people are looking for. Well, take that back. It may be what people are looking for. It's not the kind of surprise they're looking for. Or if the middle part of your movie was completely silent, People were still talking. The sound just cut out. Well, that's surprising. Yeah, but it's not, it's not the kind of surprise people are looking for. I don't know if those were good examples. But the point was, you want, you want to work within a framework. And then within that framework, you can do whatever you want. Just don't go outside that framework. And that's what... See, I'm getting that. I don't know if you can see this. This is something that ETS and ATS both do. The game is sort of slowing down and then speeding up. And I don't know if that's Windows updating, I don't know if that's, I don't know what that is. I don't even know if you can see it. So live, it's not really live gaming. Oh dear. Super laggy. And I need to go, I guess, down to this garage. I, I think it's here. Yep. How'd that happen? Oh, game. So what I'm saying is Eight grand. That's what happens when you get sloppy while you're making a delivery and hit everything. So there's nothing athletic about gaming, obviously. I'm not suggesting that. I know it's not a one-to-one -one comparison with sports. I think the, the comparison I'm trying to make is that you know approximately what you're going to see, but it's still sort of surprising. And the other thing that you get to hear is that even the people doing it don't know exactly how it's going to turn out. There's still a, an element of uncertainty to it, but within that framework. I think that's what I'm saying. So it's, that's something that I like about it. You're, you're never quite sure till the end. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I think I may be, I think Windows may be doing some Windows stuff in the background. Okay, we're going for it. Going to Alaska. Alaska? Oh, I am not awake yet. We're going to Iceland, and before we go to Iceland, we're going to Torshavn. Have a little coffee, see if I can get myself awake before we get to 
our drop-off point. So yeah, it's a little bit after seven here. Like I said, I want to I want to record these at different times of day and night. I want to be I want to be mindful of the result, and I definitely want to. put out a, a solid product and I still I'm still not 100% clear on even why it is that I'm doing this I just know it's something I want to do tons of lag right there I think we may be loading scenery and you know what's interesting is when I think about FS17 you can walk around a map before you start recording to preload all the scenery. And on something like Project Cars, the, the maps don't load scenery. The entire map loads at once. It's tricky with ETS because you can't load all the scenery at once because you drive from one place to another. The game keeps tiles loaded, but it doesn't load the entire map at once. So I'm really really struggling right now and I don't know why that is. As far as frame rate, I'm not personally struggling. So I don't know if this is coming through but it's, my game is really misbehaving and I don't want to go back to Windows. Yeah, see I'm dropping into, I'm at I'm at 30 FPS, but it's really kind of stuttering and surging. We'll take a look. Well, I'll go ahead and finish. I'm, I can't not finish a delivery once I start. I got, I got the OCD real bad. So we'll see if this smooths out at all. And if it does not, Well, I don't know what I'll do. I'll do something. Oh. to Sadist Fjorder? What's his name again? All right, let's see what kind of FPS we have in Iceland. And let's see if that surging continues. Now, something I'm curious about OBS. I believe OBS is only capturing the EXE for OBS is only capturing the EXE for ETS2. So I believe I can bring up other windows up on screen in front of ETS2 and OBS will not capture them. So I may do that. Yeah, still doing it doing it and our, our frame rate is pretty low lower than I would think it is now, I'm, I don't I don't know if you can see it and I don't know if you're familiar with what I'm talking about but ETS 2 sometimes will the game will sort of delay itself not pause itself but sort of delay itself and then almost surge ahead to get caught up and it's continuing to do that. Now, worst case scenario, 
I get done here, it continues to, to do that. I get done here, and while I'm getting done, while I'm finishing up, whatever is happening with, I imagine it's Windows, whatever's happening with Windows concludes. And by the time I get there to look, it's, it's no longer happening. We'll see. All right, frame rate's coming up a little bit. We'll see. I'm also, I don't think we go over any snow on this southern route, but we do have some fairly big hills to go up and down. And I'm curious if this little truck of ours is going to be able to do that. We'll see though. We'll stay optimistic. Optimism is key. It may be, it may not be, I don't know. That's the thing people say. Not always true in my experience. Oh, I don't, I don't know how that happened. We were slipping badly directly toward that truck. I was reaching for the pause button, not even joking. I was going to, I was going to stop the video right there. And I'm really glad I didn't. I know people wouldn't say they, they badmouth it, but I know a lot of people that don't game really don't, you can tell they really don't have much of an understanding of what gaming is, and they don't need to have one, who cares, everybody, everybody gets to think and believe exactly what they want to, but I know a lot of people don't really think about gaming as anything serious, and I, I believe I, I said this in another, I believe I said this in another episode, but somebody that comes home from work and plops down in front of the TV and watches you know, bad comedy and, and crime drama for three hours, falls asleep in their recliner, that same person will tell you that video games are dumb and a waste of time. I think it's the way things are not branded. The brand that, that certain things have. Television has a good brand, solid brand. There's other things that, you know, the brand is not as solid yet. Something like streaming, like Netflix. If you just sit in front of the TV for for three hours, or six hours, like some people do. That's just called watching TV. That there's no, there's no additional, uh, not bad name for that, but there, there's no, that's just watching TV. We've all done that since we were kids. I don't technically do that because I don't have a TV, but you know what I mean. Everybody knows what that is. But if you do the same thing with Netflix, that's that I was binging I binged and I think that goes to brand I think television has a a brand it's part of our culture it's part of our country and Netflix isn't there yet I think gaming is the same way I think for a lot of people to game not even to excess but to game at all as an adult I think for a lot of people that's a bit suspect right right out of the gate. I'm trying to hook that sign. That behavior is a bit suspect from the jump. What it, what is an adult doing gaming? I think for me, it's interesting to think the amount of, of problem solving and and even something like, fortunately, I don't have a hockey temper. But 
but I think I don't have a hockey temper. Even so, I think gaming offers me opportunities to learn to handle myself better. There's a lot of, at least in the gaming that I do, there's a lot of frustration. There's a lot of very challenging moments, but which sounds kind of dumb. And I've talked about this in, in other episodes. It's completely elective. If it's frustrating, you just turn it off. If it's really frustrating, you uninstall it from your laptop and never go near it again. So there's there's something weird about continuing to stick with an, uh, an elective activity that you find frustrating. And I think that's that's something that can be unpacked. I think anything can be unpacked. I, it sounds incredibly smug and condescending when I say it, but I feel bad for people that don't really like thinking. Fine to, it's fine to relax, and I'm not suggesting that you need to be an absolute philosopher about every single thing that comes your way in life. But I do think there's a, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> pardon me, I really need to get a dump button. Note to self, buy dump button. I don't know, hmm. Okay, I'll look into that. I'm not saying you need to be introspective and analytical about every single thing that comes your way in life. But I do think it's important that a person have the ability, not only the technical ability to think, to think about things, but also the ability to recognize that there are some things that deserve to be thought about. I feel bad for people that just don't think about things. They just don't think about anything. And I know since I was a kid, I've been told, you think too much. And I don't entirely disagree with that. I know it can be kind of frustrating sometimes between the autism and the OCD, it can be kind of frustrating sometimes to realize you're thinking about everything. But I'm fortunate in that I have the bandwidth to do that. And it's, it's something you notice as you move through life. Something you should notice as you move through life. And sometimes the most awful things that happen to you or that you do just things in your life that you really wouldn't ever think would matter to you at a certain point you can realize it's not that you like them but you value them those things are those things are part of you they make you who you are. And you can't pick and choose. Life is not a la carte. You get what you get. And you make choices. You make things happen in life. But as far as the things that you get, the things that come your way, have nothing to do with you, it's, it's tempting To dismiss some of them or to to think I didn't want that I didn't need that in my life and to continue to sort of hate on it that event or that development and I think there's something very powerful about realizing no matter what it is it's a part of you And it makes you who you are, even the bad stuff. I think the ultimate empowerment 
when you realize something like that is it's almost as though you you take control back from that event and by by claiming it for yourself you you take that power back you're no longer a victim and being a victim is one of the, the worst feelings even people that really enthusiastically move toward being a victim they want to be a victim they're always talking about how they've been victimized and just victim 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 even though they're doing it deliberately it's still an awful feeling to be a victim you're helpless somebody has power over you events have power over you when you claim those events as your own and accept them as part of your life you take that power back and you're not a victim anymore it may not change anything else but in your mind you know you're not a victim you're a participant in your own life and that's an extremely powerful realization it's an extremely powerful place to get to and it it's one of those things that makes you stand up a little straighter and when you stand up straight when you square your shoulders at the world people treat you differently they definitely do you're forced to be reckoned with I'm right up into the mountains yet still in the in the foothills the fate hills and I'm still my frame rate is coming up but I'm still getting those surges no idea where they're coming from. I'll have to take a look. I think I may be loading updates. We'll find out. This is, this is going all right so far in this little truck. I'm not... I would take a very light load over the hill to northern Iceland five tons or something, but I wouldn't take anything as heavy as what I have on now. So we'll either have to come back exactly the way we, we just drove, which I don't like doing, or I don't, I don't want to reset to Rames. Maybe we will. I don't know. I'm also... My money's coming up. I've got four drivers on. And they're all leveling up. So the money, at some point, will start coming in faster than I know what to do with it. Faster. You know what I mean. It'll come in faster than I can spend it. I'm only going to have a maximum of five trucks in this career. I may buy some other garages, but I'm only going to have five trucks ever. So there's really not a lot to spend money on at that point, except garages. And there's really no reason to buy garages if you're not going to hire drivers for them or use them to teleport, and I'm not going to teleport. So I don't, I don't even know why I would buy garages. And at that point, the money will just stack up and we'll never spend any of it. Yeah, something's going on in the background. I hope that the quality of this video isn't terrible, but something's going on in the background. I don't know if it's OBS. I don't know if it's Windows. Something is going on. The game is moving slower. Than, like, right now it says I'm going 60 kilometers an hour, but the truck is driving as if it's going about 50, and then all of a sudden it will surge ahead, I guess, to catch up to where it is in time, if that makes sense. So it's a weird, it's 
a weird feeling. It makes it hard to drive a truck. It's not terrible, but I'm really curious what's going on. Yesterday, I had, yesterday wasn't a bad day, but it was one of those days that just absolutely will not let up. From, from the time that I woke up at 5 a.m., almost till when I went to sleep. I mean, they were, it wasn't bad the whole day, but it just seemed like over and over during the day, there were these little events, these little things that happened that were really just working my nerves. And then I talked to my girl and she was having exactly the same day, different events, but it, it was just one of those one thing after another days. And by the end of it, you're just exhausted. And it's, it's always little, little ticky tack stuff. It's never anything significant. It's little ticky tack stuff, uh, just regular life in a moment please this seems to be tracking okay I, I don't know I'll google it when I'm done here I'll go on the google and I'll look it up to see what could be causing that problem I've seen it once before in ATS and I attributed attributed it to a mod but I've been driving this truck on this mod map for weeks now. I've never had a problem with it. So I'm really curious why this could be happening. It's not the end of the world, but it, it's really, it's a detail, you know? And I have a thing about details. I like, I like everything to be exactly the way it's supposed to be. I also got, uh, now it's all starting to run together and I don't want to repeat myself. I also got Planet Coaster and City Skylines and I tested both of those recently. Now I, I don't think there's going to be any building sims on the channel, but I got them just to sort of test them. And there is a, a YouTuber I watch who does a lot of city building stuff. And it, it is unbelievable to me to see what he does in real time. He does time lapses, but he does real time videos as well. It would be next to impossible for me to do what he does in a city builder, even in silence. But then on top of that, He's got a running commentary going on, and he's working incredibly fast. So it, it would be hard for me to do what I see him do at all, at any speed. He's doing it at mock speed, and he's talking the whole time and making sense. Something that I've realized when I review these videos, when I play these back, something that I've noticed and something that I really worry about is that I'm making sense because honestly I'm primarily concentrating on the driving right now and it's not I'm not talking about anything complex I just worry about things like repeating myself or really not making any sense saying things that don't make any sense misplacing words transposing words that sort of thing So I don't know that I would ever have any city building, city building games or it, Planet Coaster, it's not a city, but it's still a building game. I don't know if I would ever have any city building games on the channel. 
because I don't think I'll ever play them enough to be good enough at them for it to be worth putting the content on the channel. I think that made sense. I hope it did. I don't have the time in my life. I play transport sims. That's, that's my jam. I play transport sims, so this is where my, my attention is always going to be drawn. And I don't know that I would ever have enough time to play city building sims to get good enough at them to be able to put up content that is worth watching. This is tricky enough, and this is something that I've done a lot of. And it's still, I'm still very mindful of the quality of my content. And I think to post video, the only, the only possible way I would do that would be the novelty concept of watching me learn how to play a city building game. And that's dangerously close to a fail video. And I'm not, that's not my jam. Yeah, I really need to get a dump button. I just realized I got a, a bit of a sniffly nose. Six kilometers to go. This is when I take damage, by the way. This is when it all goes wrong. Not today, game. You know what's... It's funny, though. I was just thinking about it. The YouTuber that I watch that plays those city building games that unbelievable city builder he's done a couple transport sim games and he's terrible at them and he knows he is he, it's it's he's having some fun with it but i was just thinking about that and thinking everybody's got their spirit animal Say the scale on the minimap. Oh. Oh. So then, oh dear. Okay, so if I go up here. Got real quiet, didn't it? Real quiet. Now, do I get all cocky and start wrapping up the video right here and just hope that I get the green button? Okay. Let me do that. Do that. Do that and that. Okay. 
Here we go. See how we did. Fantastic. No damage. All right, folks. I'm going to wrap up the episode right there. I will get with you again tomorrow. Have a great day. Do what you do. 